On the bench today we've got something a little bit different. This is an AWV triode and cathode ray tube display unit type A84702 and many of you may not have ever seen one of these before and I think the only other pictures of this unit are actually on the Radio Museum website. So I'll try and give you a little bit of a background to both the company and the device. Here in Australia we had two major companies that were manufacturing vacuum tubes or valves for the Australian market and here we see the Philips Corporation this is their first building in the early 30s in Sydney where they were manufacturing tubes. Next we see is a notification of a company registration in the Sun of Sydney 19th of April 1932 where the Amalgamated Wireless Valve Company is registered and the intent of this company was to acquire Radio Corporation of America, International General Electric Co, Westinghouse Electric International and Amalgamated Wireless Australia Proprietary Limited licenses to manufacture and sell radio tubes for the use in the field of, of radio. The connection with RCA is important because AWA and AWV used trademarked names that were trademarked by RCA, particularly things like Radiola, Radiotron and similar names like that. A major contribution to the industry was the Radiotron Designer's Handbook. Here is my father's copy of the Radiotron Designer's Handbook, third edition, from the 22nd of April 1943, that was when he bought it, and uh, this uh, was what he used during the Second World War, and it was edited by Fritz Langford Smith, uh, and it's shown here as Amalgamated Wireless Valve Company, 47 York Street, Sydney. This edition only runs to about 352 pages and the subsequent fourth edition which is well known by many people and I'll just uh, just get that one out and here it is the fourth edition dad bought this in uh, on the 23rd of January 1953 so just 10 years later the fourth edition and it was actually 1952 that uh, it was released the uh, it had grown to 1474 pages by this time and it's still edited by Fritz Langford Smith and this is well regarded as the Bible for any vacuum tube or valve designs of the time. By far most of the copies sold would have been the RCA reprint. This unit was used back in the day to demonstrate how vacuum tube devices work, demonstrated in laboratories for training technicians and engineers and it gives quite a good way of showing how the thing works because initially it can be difficult getting the concept of electron flow in a vacuum across to someone who is, is just learning about this. This display unit gives quite a good idea of the operation of these devices. So how did these devices give a student the idea of what was going on the, the main thing behind this was that the anode structures in these both have phosphor on them so that the electrons when accelerated to the phosphor will cause the phosphor to glow and in the case of the triode here as you increase the grid drive voltage from 
negative through zero and, and then positive, you can actually see the increase in electrons because of the increase in the brightness of the phosphor. So what were you able to do with this unit apart from just visually demonstrating? Well, you have two controls here. You've got the triode grid voltage and when the unit is switched into the triode mode this control controls the grid voltage and you can actually see the grid voltage or the grid voltage is presented at this socket here and in a classroom or a laboratory where instruction is being given about vacuum tubes you would have had large format meters, analog meters, that could plug into these sockets and give you a reading as well as actually just seeing the change due to changing the, the voltage on the control. Similarly with the this connection over here, this will allow you to see the plate current or anode current of the triode. Right, so with the triode selected, the grid voltage set to minimum, which in this case is minus 120 volts, we'll switch on the mains and let the tubes warm up and as you can see the filament's already glowing and we'll just leave it a little bit longer. Now by increasing the, the grid voltage we can start to see some green lines forming on here which correspond to the grid lines on the tube and as I increase it the, it starts to fill out and widen and at maximum grid voltage we've got pretty much maximum current flowing. So as you can see this is a pretty direct and dramatic demonstration of biasing the tube on and off and other texts or there were movies, animated movies showing how things work but I think this was quite a, a unique idea to actually show the operation directly of a vacuum tube. Now for the CRT demonstration and this is what I think is the really clever bit of thinking that went into this design. What was done was the anode here was shaped in such a way that the electron beam goes up this way and it impinges on this anode structure so you can actually see the beam side on and actually move the beam and actually see it moving uh, to get an idea of what, how the beam would trace out on a screen up here if, uh, if this was a normal CRT. So what we'll do is we'll switch over to the, uh, the cathode ray tube, turn the power back on and we shall start to see in a minute now we see an unfocused uh, beam there. So you can see that the beam's pointing up this way and then we use this control here to focus the beam as best we can and then this is the deflection voltage and you can actually bend the beam which is looks quite cool but gives a pretty direct impression of changing the deflection voltage and the beam is deflected and similarly, well I don't have one here, but you can actually put a magnet, either a permanent magnet, 
near the side of the tube and deform the beam or they had a 6.3 volt output that you could put a, a coil on and actually uh, have an electromagnet doing the same thing. So it's it was quite a I believe an ingenious idea and frankly I don't know if anyone else in the world has actually developed specialised tubes to do this sort of demonstration. 